Hello everyone. So in today's video, I just wanted to go over the ILG B25 blower again. This time I have made a static phase converter for it. And uh, this is normally a 220 volt three phase motor, but I now have it set up so that I can run it off of a 120 volt single phase wall receptacle. Um, so without further ado, let's get into this project. Okay, so for this ILG B25 blower, the motor is a three-phase motor and it has a voltage on the tag of 220 volts. So the application that this came out of, it was used in a school and it was in fact wired for three-phase 220 volts. Uh, it was back, the building was built in 1932. So at that time, 220 was common. Now you hear 230, 240, 250 even uh, used instead of the 220. But at that time, that was the standard. And um, that actually kind of works to the advantage for what I'm doing with this. I decided I wanted to make a static phase converter so I can run it on single phase power and just plug it into an outlet and have it work. At a first glance, you think, well, the motor says 220. How would you get that to work off of a regular 120 volt outlet from the wall? And there's something cool with this. So the way this motor works, it's a six lead motor. And this is how you would wire it for 220 volt three phase configuration. You would have your line one, line two, and line three on one side, and then the other three leads get tied together. Now, most of the time, when you look at three-phase motors, a true dual-voltage three-phase motor that will allow you to have, say, uh, 230 and 460, was you know, that's a common one, or even if it's 220, 240, those generally are going to either be a 9-lead or a 12-lead motor. They can truly be split up as the dual voltage. But a 6-lead motor, it can, but it can't. It doesn't work the same way. So this motor, it wouldn't really be designed as a... Or at least it can be designed like this if they have the tolerance built into the windings. But... If we were to strictly go by that 220, you really can't say, oh, well, 220, it could be run at half that at 110. Um, it would probably work because it seems like with these old ILG motors, uh, I have another three phase that's the same frame and everything, and that one has 110 written on the tag, but on the top of the housing, it actually says 110 and 220 stamped into it. So... I'm sure that these could be accommodated for both voltages, but the windings themselves aren't going to be very happy with that. It's going to like one voltage more than the other. And I'll show you why in a second. So this is the configuration for the 220 volts. And here's the configuration for what would be the low voltage or the 110. Here you can see uh, the two top leads are tied to one line, the two middle ones, and the two bottom ones. So essentially, you have, this is your Y or star type of winding, and then this is your delta arrangement. So if we look at that, here's the windings, and you can see 220, we're tying this center point is the same thing as this. We're bridging these together. So the six leads on the motor are each end of the three windings. That's how this is set up. So we have the three ends tied together and the opposite three ends go to one of the line phases. On the low voltage type of uh, configuration, we have it in delta and the opposite ends of the windings get bonded to the adjacent winding and then those connections of the, the ends of two of any of the windings get bonded to one of the line conductors. So, um, with this, 
The reason I have here, you see it says 110, but it actually says 127. That has to do with a little bit of three-phase math. Uh, really simple, actually. But you can see here, uh, if we do the 220, now I did this kind of backwards the way I wrote this out, but you could either do 220 divided by the square root of 3, or you could do what I have here is the answer to that. 127 times the square root of 3 gets you 220. So these numbers, this shows you that when this motor is hooked up to a 220 volt line source for three phase, between each of the phases, you've got 220 volts, but the windings don't see that voltage. When you have it wired like this, you've got 220 going from here through this winding, tied together through another winding and then back out through the next phase. So those two windings, they share that voltage. But the reason this isn't going to be 110 and 110 like it would be if it was a single phase motor. This is three phase. That's where this square root of three comes in. When you do that calculation, if you do the 220 volts and you want to figure out how much voltage each of these coils is seeing, each coil is seeing the square root of 3 times, or uh, whatever this is, divided by the square root of 3. So that's where that 127 comes in. So each coil is seeing 127 volts. It's very close. It's not exactly 127. I think it's like 127.0 something, something, something. Close enough, though, for what we're doing. Um, so, here, we can see, if I have it wired with the uh, star configuration, we've got the 220 volts goes across, and each of these coils sees 127. But if we do delta, we would need to supply it with 127 volts for each of these coils to see 127 volts. Now you'll see I'm leaving one phase out, and that's because this is kind of getting to how the whole uh, static phase converter is set up for these. We only have single phase coming in. But now you can see the relationship here. So it really wouldn't be a 220 and 110 motor. It's more of a 220 and 127 motor. And that's because it's a 6 lead. If this was a 9 lead or a 12 lead, these windings are split up themselves. So rather than just having one winding from here to here, one winding from here to here, they're usually set up where there's two pairs. And depending on how you wire it, you can truly get two, uh, like a double or half voltage for your, your high or your low voltage. So you could get your it could be 220 and 440, or you know, depending on the winding, or it could be 110 and 220. But being that this is a six-lead motor, you don't truly get that. Now, like I said before, it may work if I was to wire this up to 110 in delta. It might work, but it might not be ideal for this winding. Just like the other motor that I have that's like this, which is on my ILG30W, that one is listed as a 110 volt motor on the tag, but it's three phase. Um, and that one might not be ideal if you were to hook up 220 volts to it. Um, you would have to do 110 times the square root of three and get that number. So being that this ends up where it likes 127 volts, it just so happens that the power in my house is, on average, it's around 123 volts coming out of the wall. Sometimes it dips a little lower. Sometimes it actually goes up a little higher. I've had it up to 125. I think I've even seen 126 before, which is a little bit too high to me. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the readings that I'm getting here. So, 123 on average is pretty close to 127. So that means that when I have this wired up, those windings will be pretty happy. They'll like that. If I can give them all 100, 123 volts, that is 
well within a tolerance of, I think it's within 5% tolerance of the voltages of these windings. So that being said, that takes care of wiring the motor correctly to be able to do this. So the next step is going to the actual sta uh, static phase converter side. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the static phase converter portion of this project. And I just wanted to kind of give a little overview before I plug this in and run it. Um, you can see here we've got the regular 120 volt single phase cord that'll plug in the wall. Um, now, there's some things I'd like to add, like a control panel with switches and maybe some other relays and things. But for right now, this is just to be able to run it. What I have here is, this is a 30 microfarad capacitor, which you can see in the circuit is right here. And that goes between L1 and L2. And that is for power factor correction. So that's the first capacitor. Uh, we have a start capacitor right here, and that goes between L2 and phase C of the motor. And then I have um, a 17.5 right here. That is between phase A and C. And then between phase B and C, I have a 65 microfarad capacitor. So the reason for all these is this is what it took for me to get this to run with balanced phase voltages between all three phases. Since this right now in its current application is a fixed load, there's a resistance plate that I put on the front of the blower because these need a little bit of back pressure to work properly. So I put a resistance plate in there and that's pretty much the, the load on it is never going to change unless I use this in a ducted system. I would have to probably alter this phase converter. But for this, um, through some testing, this is what got me the balanced phase uh, voltages. So to, to get this, I had to use a couple tools, one of which was this. This is a homemade tool. Basically, this is a box that has a bunch of capacitors in it of different values. And it's a, they call these a decade box. And you can switch these on and off. And um, through this, I can use this to make any variety of capacitance value um, from, I think this one will go from one to, I think it's like somewhere in the 70 something microfarad range uh, with all of them turned on. So I was able to use this and with the combination of this tool and having a voltmeter hooked up, I could switch these on and off and figure out what capacitance values gave me the voltage that I was looking for. Now, in order to measure the voltages, another handy tool, I bought this, uh, it's like a three, three phase voltmeter that snaps onto a DIN rail. And, um, this actually came in very handy with this project because now I could just wire the three phases of the motor onto this end. I just have a little terminal block here to wire it to. And then on this end, I could actually monitor the voltages in all three phases at any given time. So that helps a lot when you're, when you're going through this. It's a lot of trial and error. So I could just switch different values and see what it did to the voltages. And uh, eventually I got to the point where they are pretty much all balanced exactly. Uh, they might fluctuate up and down by a volt between the different phases, but they're pretty much exactly right on. I think they're all, uh, when, when this is running, it usually seems to center about all 122 or 123 volts uh, with all three phases. So uh, without getting too crazy into this, uh, there is a potential relay on the other side here that is used to uh, kick the star capacitor out of the circuit once it gets up to speed. But what I will do next is I will demonstrate how this starts. And I'm going to show that it can work without the star capacitor, but it takes a good bit longer to start up. And then I'll start it with the star capacitor. And I will also have a kilowatt meter set up so that you can watch the current draw 
as this thing is starting up. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see that meter. Right now we've got 122.5 volts coming in. So I'm going to switch this over to current, and we're going to start this up. The first time you're going to see this start is with the start capacitor. So here we go. See, I'm only drawing 1.92 amps. And I'm at a power factor of 0.95. And we're drawing 220 watts. 221, whatever. Alright, so now I'm going to turn that off and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to disconnect the start capacitor. Okay, so the start capacitor is now disconnected. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put the... I want this stop this. Alright, so now we're back to the current. And I'm going to start it again. And we're going to watch what happens. It's going to take much longer to get up to speed. You can see 7.63 amps is the highest, I think. You can see we're back up to where we were for current, or I should say back down. Uh, 1.92 roughly. And again, power factor 0.95 watts, 219, it's basically 220, it's pretty much the same where it was. Because nothing's different now that it's running. The star capacitor just helped give it a faster start. So now I'll just turn that off. Let it coast down. Now, you probably could hear there's a certain spot when the motor is picking up speed where it really didn't like it. There was some really weird magnetic hums going on there. Uh, you could tell the motor wasn't happy at that specific speed. But that's why the it's much better to run this with the start capacitor so that it just gets up really quick and reaches its full speed. And then it's nice and happy running at that full speed. So... Anyway, I uh, hope you have all enjoyed watching this. Uh, it was definitely kind of a fun video for me to make. Uh, I've been wanting to wanting to make this static phase converter build for a while for this blower. I still have to make one for the B30 blower um, because it's just nice to be able to run it off of a regular outlet and not have to have my phase converter running and all this other stuff to run these blowers. So that's why I really wanted to just make it so that it would plug into a standard outlet. And um, it runs pretty nice. It doesn't really get warm after it's been running for a long time. And having the, the, the phase voltages all balanced, it, it seems to like that. So anyway, uh, if you haven't done so already, please like this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. And thank you all for watching.